You are listening to The Tracy L. Clark Show with me, Tracy L., where I'm going to empower you and teach you how to live your extraordinary life. Tune in every Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific, on Transformation Talk Radio, where I combine ministry, science, and spirituality to reveal the steps you need to let go of your perceived limitations. Have you had the limiting self-talk over and over? Have you noticed you allow your fears to hold you back? If you're truly ready for change, I invite you to join me, Tracy L. Clark, and start your journey of transformation now. Welcome to the Tracy L. Clark Show for another weekly episode where we are going to shift, redesign your life, recalibrate your life and restore. It's why we always have such amazing guests with us today. We have Selena Moon. Again, I'm so happy she's offered to be able to come back as we're going to get you today a little bit more in alignment for holidays. You know, the Christmas past, the Christmas now, the Christmas future. You know, it's time to restructure and redesign as we head into 2019. And if you haven't had an opportunity, I want to encourage you to check out our website at tracylclark.com. And I would ask you, you can download the free 18 minute audio. We also have a global online call tonight where we're going to continue to shift after this conversation. But one of the things I want to give a shout out to our incredible TLC community. We do reach around the world. And what people don't know is on Thursday, we held our big give, give back event. It is a live in person, but people donate to the families in need within our community as we are always giving throughout the entire year. We're also starting to create what we call the Extraordinary Kids Program. We've created an incredible bracelet just for the children. 100% of the proceeds go to the kids, which you will see on our website soon. But between Thursday and this morning, we have anonymously raised over $15,000 into that program where everything for our children, we're going to start to do a social media platform will be free to the children to learn what is going on with their bodies. Why do they feel that way? Why do they feel maybe different or bullied? If you've been like many of us that are different coming up through the lines, we realize much later in life as we start to redesign our own lives, thank you God, that we're not really that different. We just don't fit in the systems. And when we teach children, and I've taught hundreds of kids how to connect with their body and their intuition, we can move them into a better world. We can move them into a better place where they understand and learn boundaries and what they're feeling. So I want to give a big shout out to our community that has supported this initiative as we move forward, because I'm telling you, the more we can connect together and grow together, the more we change the world. It is about communities that you are in and you're involved in. And I want to thank the Hannah God before we get going today to just opening all of you up into new levels and layers of perceptions and ways of being and to remove the accumulation. Thank you, God, of the roots and the seeds that may have been implanted in you or you just didn't know any different that kept you from understanding, giving and receiving and community and opening your heart drive. I don't call it a hard drive, even though for many of you, you will know, I look at your body like a computer as a body regeneration specialist. That's what I do. However, I'll tell you, it is a heart drive. So you have a hard drive in your computer, but you have a heart drive in your heart that holds all of these patterns and all of this information that keeps you locked up and stuck. And as we continue to embark in these next 24 months, 24 months, you're going to see a massive transformation in the world. And you're going to really be glad that you have found communities like this or other communities in your area to help you get through those valleys, those hard times. And I want to thank the hand of God for anybody going in through a valley right now, a hard time that we start to bind that energy that kept you there or maybe kept you afraid from moving forward into what you know your redesigned life is supposed to look like. Your beautiful, extraordinary way of living is waiting for all of you. And once you start to see it, that's not the time to stop. That's the time to dig in. And that's where I want to go here with Selena. I'm so happy you joined us today. <laughs> so much for having me. Wow. I felt all those intentions moving through my body and I could just see all kinds of colors happening. And my heart was just really connecting when you were speaking about the children. I feel so much that you're making such a tremendous impact in the world. And before we start anything, I just want to thank you for doing this work because it's so needed. So thank needed. you. Yeah. It's about those kids. And as we come to the, this end of the year, you know, a lot of times people are talking about, and you've probably heard this with your own practices that and I get chills. It's like, oh, what's the present? What's that gift? And, you know, I've got my tree here. And it's like, 
what's the gift under the tree? Well, it's not really anymore, guys, about the toy that you're going to forget about. It's about connection and fitting in and belonging and adults, children. And if we can teach them as children, because you and I never learned any of this as kids, then all of a sudden they can make the difference and they're not really trying to fulfill and we, I heard this the other day, the kids like, I want more, I want more. I was outside in the getting some things and I want more, I want this, I want this. And it's like, we really got to change the perceptions of people and children that it's not about the gift you're going to forget about. And we've all been there. We get these gifts. You don't even remember them, but you remember the experiences. You remember belonging, community, people that picked you up when you felt down. And that's why I was so excited to do this show with you today. Mm, yeah, it's actually a really important time to be doing something like this because you're right. This is a this is an opportunity for people to start looking at giving and receiving in a different light. Yeah, give exactly. And what are the things you've noticed? Because people, I find there's a big thing that comes up this time of year, and I want to clear it for the audience, and I want to work with you today so we can clear this for everybody listening. Is don't you find this time of year there's a spirit of obligation that comes up, and it's huge. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Someone gives yeah. you a present. They're like, oh, I feel obligated to give you something yeah. or expectations. Or they may think, oh, I want this for Christmas just because I, it got skewed. Like the whole holiday has been skewed. <laughs> it's shifted yeah. into a very crazy, crazy way of being rather than what it is about connection. It has. And you know what I find is that the more conscious that people are becoming, they're recognizing how their emotions and, and their childhood and their perceptions of the world are really what drive them in life. It, it dictates yeah. how their health is. It dictates how their interactions are with others. It dictates the success of their career choices. Yeah. It dictates the stability and love in their friendships and in their partnerships. And I think that as we evolve as human beings, we're starting to recognize that the greatest gift of all is one of complete alignment within ourselves. And I think that in the community that I have, and I'm super blessed because I get to work with people that are evolving at a rapid rate, I find that people are becoming actually a lot more willing to share love at a deeper level in, in, in the sense of, you know what, it's not so much about buying someone ex an expensive gift so much as it is about maybe spending quality time with someone or even just a text message filled with love. I find that like, that goes a really long way to someone who actually has an open heart chakra or an open hard drive, heart drive. Is <laughs> the hard drives are, you know, I, I, it's, it's so funny how, how when Spirit was talking about the heart drive, because, and you've just touched on this and people to understand that our hard drives are getting more, what are they going? I guess gigabytes when you can increase more, right? More patterns, right? Gigabytes. If I got that wrong, but, but basically awesome. the expansion of our heart drives, we're getting more space in our hearts. Like you said, to create more of that love and that compassion that yeah. is so going to be needed as we come to the end of the year. And you've probably noticed that there's so many people right now, they're going through, I call them the peaks and the valleys. Yeah. And it's like, one day I feel up on a high, then one day I'm on a low, then I'm yeah. on a high, and then exactly. I'm on a low. Have, yeah. Haven't you noticed the increase on the planet of people going through that? Absolutely. Especially the last couple of months, I feel like yeah. I've been getting like, even within my own practice and the clients that I connect with, they're like, last week I was on top of the world. And today I just feel like really low. Right. And yeah. it's just, you know, I think it's about having one foot in each, the light and the dark and being super aware of yourself and understanding that everything is serving a greater purpose, even if you can't see it in the moment. Yeah. And there's also, I've noticed there's this really big pull at the end of the year of all the things. Well, thank the hand of God we're removing for all of us, all the things that are from 2018 that you don't want to bring in. So yeah. it's also trying to rip everything off before the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. And which can bring pain because this time of year is not always happy for everyone. Like it can bring a lot of pain for people as well. I would love to know your insight on this because what my, like you've been in this work for quite some time and so have I. And what I found is like even five years ago, the way that these things were getting ripped off were very subtle and they were based on choices that were conscious, that people had to consciously make in their lives in order to move forward, which is why I think things like New Year intentions were so strong on the planet because it was just something that we almost needed to really drive forward and really have that exertion and determination towards. But I feel like as there's more light coming into the planet and our consciousness is evolving, it's 
it's almost like spirit is actually taking care of it more naturally through our higher selves. And I think, I think like that the things that are being ripped off from people are actually just happening more organically than by conscious choice, because we're so much more connected to our higher selves than we've been in the past that it's almost like it's getting, it's like, if you don't say bye to it, it's just going to leave anyway. <laughs> so you may as well just. Yeah. And like, a lot of people don't understand that that was that choice that so many people on the planet made back in 2012. Remember when yeah. all the movies came out, the world's going to end and yeah. the aliens are going to come yeah. down and blah, blah, blah. No, 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 people. Here we are the aliens. Yeah, here we are the aliens. <laughs> Uh, we're the crazy ones, but really what, what I've noticed, so that was that choice making, right? So as we get closer and closer and closer to the 2020 kind of realignment and our connections are naturally getting stronger, yes. you're correct. It's like, um, it's like running a, uh, you know, a virus scanner that's always on your computer. So yeah. we have that energetically going on in our system. So it's just yeah. pulling off and removing. So now what's yeah. happening is if you haven't made the choices, it's being removed and now you've got to reset those those choices so you can move forward because in 20 in 2012 somewhere along the line everybody said okay I'm either going to go with the light and be part of this movement or I'll go in the dark space or either which means either they're going to you know a lot of people that's why at this time of year people leave right because they don't want to endure the next level but we're all being recalibrated to what we agreed way back then yes. and just like you said naturally so that, but that will face hard times in terms of, okay, if somebody agreed and they didn't recalibrate and then like up in Canada here, there's been a lot of job loss lately, right? A lot with oil and gas and GM and all this, but a lot of people that were recalibrating knew that they would have to, at that point, look for a new area of work or career, but the old patterns locked them into, this is my security. This is my pension. This is my whatever. Perfect. And now they're having a realization that, Oh, that's not the case because mm -hmm. they have to get to a new area of more enlightenment work. Yes. And it's good. It forces them into it, right? Because yeah. if they didn't have that, then how would they even progress in life? It's almost like when you rip off that bandaid, you can pay attention to two things. You can pay attention to how much it hurt or you can feel how relieved you feel afterwards. It's your choice, right? <laughs> well, I know if I hadn't had that bandaid ripped off, like what are we going into eight, nine years now? I wouldn't be here because I right? was still in that place, even though I've been down this path now for over 16 years, I yeah. wouldn't be here because I needed that push. And then that yeah. real sink of, okay, do I sell myself back out to corporate or go to do what I want to do? So this time of year, guys, you're getting pushed, yeah. push, push, push. What's the biggest thing you're seeing right now with your clients that you're working on with the transition as we do? Like, what's the number one, you'd say one or two things where you go, oh my gosh, as we're getting to the end of the year, this is a common theme. So we can start to shift this for everybody. Absolutely. Those are great questions. So the first thing I'm noticing is that I have to keep telling people that it's going to get better. And what that really means is that um, a lot of people have gone through really significant issues in their relationships, um, whether it's work relationships, personal relationships, um, even relationships with their children. This has been a theme in the last, basically ever since Venus went into retrograde. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 and then Mercury right after. So I think that really created a lot of um, instability in people's lives with respect to the way that they were connecting with others. And I think a lot of realizations, including within myself, is like, how are we operating in relationship to others? And what I saw was that a lot of patterns that were being cleared were around the concepts of A, needing to have control. Oh, yes. Or how the relationship goes or what you want to create from the relationship, not allowing spirit to come through and dictate that. Um, and then number two is expectations. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. um, the third one has a lot to do with the way in which people perceive others is often a projection of their own wounds. Mm -hmm. Oh, amen. Yes, yes. And it's, it's, it's more intense right now. Like it is really more intense. It's gone are the di days, guys, where we can sit there and say, oh, they did this to me or oh, they did that to me. You know, we made an agreement. And a lot of times when I back this out for people, you probably notice I'm like, if you sort of see when it came to an end, and you start to see the blessing you got from it, you know, like, I hear people all the time, they'll say to me, they'll go, oh, you know what? Like this was, this yeah. person was horrible. This person did this to me. And I'm like, well, yeah. wait a minute though. Yeah. But that person led you to the relationship you're in now. Thank you, God. Or that person led you to the new job. 
So maybe you're not on the yeah. same wavelength now, but they came in for a reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's hard for people to understand. I was just going to say that's hard for people to understand because the reason is that they're so consumed with being a victim. Yes. So badly to feel that the external world has influence over their internal world, world that they don't want to take responsibility. And that's yeah. all what it comes down to is if you want to dictate your success in this new energy, responsibility is where it's at. That's the secret, in my opinion, to a lot <laughs> of different things. If you really want to take that, that, that throne back, for the king or queen that you are, you want to take responsibility for the way that you feel. You must yeah. take responsibility for the way that you feel. And look at where your actions are and where they, you know, where they were a big role in whatever that space or outcome or the blessings they may even just allowed you to grow. And, yeah. and I think that's a really good word, the responsibility, because a lot of people, you'll find this time of year more it's like well they didn't do that I hear this a lot from people they didn't do this for me so I'm not going to go there I didn't I'm like well wait 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 a minute we got to stop that yeah and that accumulation if anybody's feeling that I'm just going to start to move yeah. that accumulation of the roots and the seeds but yeah. and we'll reset it in your hard drive to the understanding of humility and compassion yeah. thank you God because also notice this time of year that there's so much pressure on people and yeah. if anyone can listen to understand that being responsible is good boundaries and not ever feeling pressured. Yeah. And I know, I remember the year when I woke up and I said, I'm going to just have Christmas with me and my two children. I'm not going to run anywhere. I'm not going to feel obligated to do anything. I'm not going to drive all these hours in a car because it doesn't make me happy. Right. My whole world changed. Yeah. My whole world You're changed. Good. Yeah. It was like, yeah. whoa, we can still have nice, you know, family chats, but I don't need to be in all these environments. Yeah. So the people that are feeling a need, I think mm -hmm. Selena and I'll start to move that for you. No yeah, more need. Yeah. So that's part of your boundary, right? Yeah. I'm feeling a lot of energy in the root chakra. It's almost like a false sense of belonging is what I'm sensing. Yeah. So the oh, huge. Like they have to go to these things. It's because they believe in some way that's, that's where they belong. And so there seems to be like, I'm really connecting with almost like a, uh, cross purposes within each individual that I might be tuning into right now, whoever is watching, not sure this yeah. resonates. Um, but basically what I'm seeing is that their belief system is so much engraved in the sense that that's where they need to go to feel belonging, that they're not naturally feeling a sense of belonging to this planet and to the overall community that the universe has brought here together on this planet, that we are a one family on earth. And if you were to connect with that sense of belonging, you would no longer need to be able to, to feel the need to go out and do the things just to give you that false sense of belonging and security from the people that you don't necessarily feel aligned with to begin with. Thank you, God. Let's reset that. We're going to reset that in your hard drives. And I know it's interesting yeah. you say that. One of my newsletters I put out was all about wanting to belong. And do you know it got the most response? And wow. you have hit, yeah, you have hit this exactly perfect. And this is a time wow. of year people also will grab in other things to belong. And what Selena is saying, guys, is so accurate because let's remove that you think that by you have to be with physical bodies to belong. And let's yeah. remove that accumulation because your connection, your yeah. relationship with your connection, number one, will make you belong. That's yeah. be it, right? You will belong yeah. right there. Exactly. Then you can connect into these beautiful communities or people, like you were saying earlier, of just that you, once you feel whole inside, you won't, this need to belong, this need to be in that space will go. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be with communities and people that are just going to love you. Yes. And it's wherever they are in the world. Yep. And I think that takes time for some people, you know, yeah. it doesn't happen just like that. If you're having a year or two of loneliness because you're yeah. going through something. Yeah. Let's, let's ask the hand of God to also. Let's remove the spirit of loneliness. Cause yeah. there have you, I know I went through this where I had periods where, and it was an old pattern yeah. where you felt so alone and you were like, I feel so alone. Then all your friends are like, I feel lonely too. Imagine, you know how many people say that? Yeah. A lot of people say that. Let's remove that spirit of yeah. loneliness for all yeah. you guys listening, because, you know, you got, you got the two of us here and the power of two with all yeah. you guys, we can shift really fast because yeah. I, I know you and I've had this conversation. Like when I really learned to connect and form that relationship. And when you did yeah. all that went away, Oh, I get chills. It all went away. Oh, well, it's because you just realize that there is literally an army moving with you everywhere you go. You can't deny it. <laughs> you can't shake all those friends that are constantly helping you. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you may think that they're invisible, but the second you see like a little funny thing happen in your glass of water or a little piece of furniture move or just something that looks a little funky, like a bird comes and sits with your <laughs> or, you know, a butterfly lands on you, you know, right? You That's know. physical signs. You don't have to be able to have this massively open third eye. No. To be- feel that I think it's just a sense of understanding it that it's safe for you and to always call in the highest frequencies to come into your world and to not be afraid of them because so many people are so afraid based on religious programmings of like oh gosh are right that you know the religious paradigm is huge and I know next year it's a big initiative just really break that down and what you just touch on is so true because there's a lot of rules and a lot of guidelines and you know people when they see supernatural stuff they do freak out they're like whoa like i've been where you know after i reconnected and my my friend joshua mills and stuff i see like i did a our evolutionary group we were doing a healing and a restoration of the body so it's our 90 day intensive and i had green dust all over my computer i didn't know what it was i had to email him say what is this but you know, for a lot of people, they'd be like, well, did you spill makeup or whatever? Or, you know, even after our Thursday event, people were like, I have gold dust on me. I have red dust. And it was like, so I didn't know what it was at first. I had to ask. So it was, yeah. you don't know, you ask, right? And it was healing and restoration. But a lot of people would freak out and go, oh, well, that must be makeup. I'm like, really? I'm sitting here and now my computer's <laughs> full. Like I got a, I tried to get a picture, but I think this is what it is with religious programming that if something supernatural happens yeah. that all of a sudden you're doing something demonic or witchcraft yeah. or which is so garbage. I know it's awful because there's so much greatness to be received from that. And I think that like the whole world, we got to do this together. We can't just mm-hmm. have a few people because it's very much like, I really do see us all one family and I don't exactly. think it's possible for the highest person to go beyond anything until the rest of them catch up. That's just, maybe that's Correct. a false belief. But if I think about the four minute mile and how, how many people ran a four minute mile after the first guy ran his four minute mile yet before that, nobody could, it wasn't a possibility. So when we, when we enlighten ourselves to new possibilities, we grow as a community, as, as a family on this planet. And I think that's where more and more becomes possible, but we really want to remove some of these limiting beliefs. So the whole world can move together. Yes. So we don't have such extremes of people who are seeing things, but can't see more because the people at the bottom can't accept it. Yes. Right. And I always say, you know, we go together, we grow together, but that's called tethering too. And people say, what's tethering? I'm like, well, we're all connected and you're right. We have to all keep evolving so we can keep being and feeling safe and right. to celebrate when you guys see feathers that show up naturally everywhere. Or like you were saying the, you know, the bird that came or I had, um, I had a, I, I love it when people send me notes, like a loved one had passed and before they pass, they agreed. I see this all the time that I'll come back, like you said, in a butterfly or in this kind of bird. And they're like, Tracy, there was that thing. And it just wow. showed up. And I'm like, well, that's them saying hi. Like, why not take it? Embrace it. It's the blessings. It's the holidays and all year round. Mm-hmm. Because even with that, uh, what I love this time, I'm going to clean this for you guys. And you probably notice this. And it's so funny back to this whole sort of religious paradigm too, is this is the year, the time of year, everyone believes more. I'm going to believe more. And then January comes and okay, I don't believe anymore. Yeah, those angel movies are done. (laughs) No more miracles, we're in January. (laughs) We're miracles, it's January, it's taxation time. Let's get going, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Miracles miracles. every day, thank you very much. (laughs) Every day, all year round. And you're so correct as these old paradigms break down. We can bring these communities where you can see, like, as we get to the end of the year, more communities are all crossing over to be in that space of growth. Like, gone are these days of, it's my company, it's my company, it's me. Like, it used to be like that. Yeah. But it's not anymore. People got to understand, if you're not coming together like that, then you're going to be left behind. Co-creation. It is. It is. It's, and that's a really good word right now, because God's going to tell you, you want to start co-creating with your communities, with your with your loved ones, and really seeing how you are giving and receiving. Yeah. What's Absolutely. the number one thing you could leave for you could leave? I know we're gonna to have to go to commercial break soon, but I want your opinion and your your what you see intuitively on the planet of the change of giving and receiving. Yeah, I actually really feel like there's a lot of shame around receiving. 
And when I was tuning into this, it's because when you give, you feel like you have control over somebody. You have the upper hand. You're the one that's the giver. You're the one that opens the door. You're the one. So there's a giving that's from light and there's actually a giving from darkness, which I think- Oh, yes. And, you know, for wanting to give to charity to get some kind of like credit or to increase your reputation or to look good in front of your friends or to look like a hero or whatever any of those paradigms are. Were you I, watching our government lately? <laughs> not to. Yeah, we're like exposing. I'm like, okay, let's not do that. Yeah, photo up, photo up. Yeah. <laughs> I had to say it. Sorry. <laughs> Carry on before we go to break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah lifting everyone in the government to the next life, life of yes. <laughs> all that in yeah so that's kind of that's really where I feel like there's a big shift happening in terms of like understanding that by you receiving you're actually if someone's giving with love and you're receiving with love that's a gift to the person that's giving you know because I think one of the struggles that I've seen that I've had is like when you have so much love in your heart that you just want to give from your heart and someone doesn't receive that yeah. it's a little bit like it's kind of a distasteful experience where you're just like I just wanted to give that to you from my heart and you didn't you didn't you know you didn't you weren't open to that I wasn't asking to start tying cords to you or mm -hmm. you know or anything like that there was it was attachment free love that I've had um rejected from me so I realized in that experience that that's also what I was attracting in my clients as well, because our clients are always a reflection of us in some way. And uh, what I really tuned into was the fact that like we need to learn how to be better receivers of true love, not of obligated love. <laughs> yeah, which we've always been conditioned. It's obligated love. And I want to actually come back after the break and talk about the obligation and of, of love and what that is and why once we hit humility and compassion you guys will find that you will be totally disconnected from this energy and we'll do some of that when we come back selena where can people find you they'd like to know more about what you do easy it's www.selenamoon.ca you can also look me up on facebook if you do please send me a message because i don't accept friend uh, requests from people that i don't know or that they don't share with me where they found me so please do that if you do choose to add me to facebook um otherwise you can also go to um the selena moon project at gmail.com to reach out to me personally i love it okay make sure you check her out we're going to be back right after the break and we are going to talk more about obligation and start to break this pattern for you guys so you can go into humility and compassion and learn to receive at your highest and best mm. space that you need to be in so we'll be back right after the break Welcome back to the Tracy L. Clark Show. I'm so happy you're joining us today. We are talking about all things holidays, obligations, expectations, and hopefully you will check out Selena Moon and her website, get in touch with her, see what she's doing. We're going to see more of her with us in 2019 as we talk more about collaboration. There's a lot of things changing. I also hope you'll check out our website at tracylclark.com. Get your free 18-minute audio download. Why? People tell me they're listening to Cleaning Out the Weeds every day and they're having some pretty miraculous changes changes so make sure you get that it's one of the things we can give back to you so all right before we went to break we were talking about obligation and removing that because out of the heart space with love and I think this is yes it comes with the giving and the receiving and so many empaths don't you find they they you hear this a lot I went through this I'm sure you went through this it's like well I give and I give and I give and I give and eventually get jaded right and because you don't you're not seeing what's coming back because you do have these expectations that if you give, you're going to be seen or you're going to be heard or you're going to be appreciated or validated. Yeah. Did you go through that? I'm going to remove that out of people's heart drives while we talk. The biggest way possible I went through that. Yeah. And didn't you find there was a relief? If anybody can hear this as I move this out of your heart drive and Selena and I are, are talking about this is when you actually come to a level of humility and compassion, like you were saying, yeah. we just give because it's on. you have no expectation or obligation yeah. and literally guys I'm gonna tell you you get neutral you don't care you're just like yeah. I want to give I want to give and yeah. however it is yeah. and I don't know if you know this but I, this is why I tell people if they don't know how to give without wa wanting something back 
Mm -hmm. I say, start by actually going through a coffee drive through and literally everyone's going, just hand the extra few dollars. Like you don't have to go to the expensive ones unless you want to. I don't know what they have in other worlds, but up here where we are, we do have coffee shops where coffee can be $2, not $10. And so yeah, you know, exactly. Whether it's exactly. So I say to them, go and give mm -hmm. and ask to pay for the coffee for the person behind you. Yes. And go through the drive through because they're not going to see you pay for it. Yeah. And it's interesting because even though that is a financial space, yeah. give it to make their day, but they don't know you and you yeah. don't have to have any expectation or obligation coming back. Exactly. And it'll help to relief and just say, I want to make someone's day when you do that. I just want to make somebody's day a little better. I love that. And you know, the other thing that I started doing is I actually had to start checking in every time I gave. So oh. What I realize is that I have to personally go through my own process before I give anything because my innate instinct is to give. And I actually had to learn how to recalibrate that. And I'm still in the process. Oh. It doesn't happen as quickly. So yeah. I still, every time I want to check in or every time I want to give, I go through a check-in. Okay. Okay. So explain what your check-in looks like for people. And I love yeah. this. And then I'll give you a, a second part to that. I love what you're saying for people who don't understand how can I, so what's your tool? How can they check in before right. they get? Okay. So the first question I ask myself is why, why do I want to give this person something? And often what would come up for me is because they did something for me. Oh, oh, let's remove that. Okay. Yeah. For everybody yeah. listening, yeah. I'm going to remove as she talks. Thank you. God. Yeah. 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 So it was because they did something for me that I wanted to say thank you back. And I realized, but I could just say thank you. Because <laughs> thank you is also acknowledgement and giving in a sense. How does that make you feel when you first started doing that for people who are understanding the process? It was quite difficult just to say thank you. Oh, yeah. Like I still feel like that's moving out of me because there's a part of me that feels like thank you is not enough. Yeah. Yeah, not enough. Let's remove that for you guys where it's not enough. And we'll override the hard drive that it is enough. Yeah, thank you is enough. If somebody yeah. gives you something, literally just saying thank you is a big thing. And for me, I would feel, I used to feel so overwhelmed when someone gave me something, mm -hmm. my body would start sweating. <laughs> like oh, that's how wow. I couldn't even receive because it was just yeah. like so uncomfortable. So I, I had to go through even like a breathing process because I realized that by by getting overwhelmed, I wasn't being present with the person who was giving me something and acknowledging what they were giving me and being loving and grateful. Instead, I was going into a, oh my God, I don't deserve this. What am I doing? I'm not worthy. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. And it was like, ooh, that's some dark stuff that I picked up from childhood. So I had to clear that first. That was like step one. And then step two was going into the check-in and being like, okay, so now do I have to give something back? Like have to? Do I really mm. have to? That, those words, right? Yeah come from a high vibration so no. clearing that and just realizing that if I say thank you to somebody that is huge gratitude is massive so yeah. re recognizing that I don't necessarily do anything more than say thank you um because the person who's giving when they're giving from their heart that's all they really want is yeah and there's two things I've learned out of this that I'll add to that which I love and the, the viewers and listeners can take this is that um one if I have turned away things people have given me I have said wow. no thank you yeah. this is a hard one because I knew and I saw and you're like me you see the energy oh, so yeah. it's like there's a huge obligation there like they are expecting something in return yep. and what I'll tell you guys when you get good at receiving you will get very good at also saying thank you very much but maybe somebody else would be able to use that yeah. or thank you very much I'm not able to accept that that's a whole other level because you're like because oh, people go oh my god without offend somebody and oh my gosh so a mirror you put up a mirror for them to be like what am I doing wrong Right? Yes. And so some get received well, some don't, but you start to realize there's a huge obligation. It's funny. We talk about our animals and I was just saying on the break, Maggie, my little baby here who's a year, she's always trying to get into the conversation. So she's right behind me. And when people have given me things that I actually did bring in the house and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to have to clean that or move that out. Yeah. They destroy it within a, within about half an hour, they will find it. They will kick it off. They will destroy it. So it's out of the house. So it's our, our loved ones and that are around us, it's amazing why things will sometimes break or be destroyed. If you've accepted something that you should say no. Right. And the other thing that I've really learned over time, and if this is a practice one guys, and so you, you can practice this one too. I actually never give unless I hear it from God. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So unless I hear it, so some people may not be able to hear it, right. but you might feel it. So yeah. here's an example I went through and I will tell people so they get it. I went through the drive, a drive through on the weekend. Um, and I was getting ready to, to go to an event with my daughter and we love to support the local artisans. And I, so I went in the morning and I got some tea and I heard very clearly, you have to give them $20 for the people behind you. And I just kind of grabbed out of my purse and I grabbed a bill. I wasn't quite looking and I heard $20 and I'm like, and I looked and I had a $10 bill in my hand. So I was like, okay. So I'm like, okay. So I get the 20 out and I give it and they're like, why are you giving this? And I said, well, just, I don't know, make their day back there, you know? And they're like, but you're our happiest customer. Why? Why? You know, I'm like, make their day. But I'm going to tell you guys by listening to that, the rest of the day, like where my daughter and I went, we met people that were talking about energy. We got into the event for free, like all this stuff happened. Yeah. And then we got another call that night with a pretty big donation into our kids program because wow. you listen. So yeah. I give when yeah. I hear to give. I love that you said that because that actually reminds you of a story. May I share it? Yes, please do. So it was like a few Christmases ago, I was visiting my parents in Calgary and I remember there was a woman sitting out and Calgary's cold. You know, you've been there. No, oh, I lived there for 15 years. I got it. <laughs> we both live there. So, so Calgary's freezing in the winter time. And yeah. so there was this woman, she was in this wheelchair. She was sitting out in a parking lot and she was asking for money. And I remember I was with my dad and I was like, and I heard the same thing, $20. So it's funny you said that. <laughs> I was hearing $20. And, and so I pulled $20 out of my wallet and I gave it to her and my dad just lost it on me. <laughs> He's wow. Just, what are you doing giving someone like that $20? And I was like, Spirit told me to give her twenty dollars, and it, it's not because my dad's not a generous or caring person, but it's just because like he was floored by the fact that I would do that because it just felt like it was just too much for him to be able to comprehend in his in his mental space, right? And so, yeah, working from the mind is not the answer. We really do want to fuse, like obviously logically, we have to consider certain things, but ultimately, if you're hearing something, there is a logical explanation that can be incorporate yeah. it as well or if you're feeling it right it's like yeah. thank you god for being and i want to thank that and i'm going to push him for everybody for generous receivers and being generous givers yeah. not just of your money guys but it's like what you were just saying that was a financial thing i talked about financial thing but also of your time and your energy because here's the thing i want to clean up for people and you've probably seen this as well is that a lot of people and i had this actually brought up to me four times this week so i'm going to bring it up where wow. people who had donated into the kids space, they said to me, Tracy, this is the first time I donated with my money. I always donate my time because I don't want to be ripped off. Wow. And I was like, wow. And how many people? I don't so be ripped off. I don't want to be ripped off. So they only donate their time, but wow. they would never go out of the box other places. And I said, but you have to be generous of spirit. And they got this. This is why they said it. Generous of spirit moving, yeah. whether they call it giving, sewing, tithing, they're all different, but into places where they know there's this fertile ground. And it's like fertile ground, guys, is really about having good soil to plant good seeds, yeah. whether it is your money, your time, your effort, but not having that attachment, right? And understanding that you guys can open this to like whole new levels yeah. of where more people will want to then get. But I think I th when we're talking, I can see the energy and you said this so well, I can see there's an accumulation of energy that people are like, I can't receive even what we're saying. Yeah. I want to start to move this. Cause can't you feel that? Can you see that? They're like, how do I even receive that? Like they're really struggling. Oh, the heart. Yeah. yeah. Like huge. Their heart drives like, no, 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 no. And this whole, again, obligation or it chills. So let's remove that um, for the listeners because that is like a whole other level, like what you're talking about of giving that on all of, all of, all of who you are. All I'm seeing like a string of beads that are just like super saturated with old stories and paradigm. Oh, yeah. Huge. huge. <laughs> what is the number one thing that you, um, that you really notice as we are coming to the end of the year here that is, um, joyful that you notice is so beautiful like there's yeah we move the p stories and the paradigms but mm -hmm. I see so much beauty coming in as we shift through these next couple of years although there'll be the chaos to go through but yeah. what's some of the beautiful things that you've seen at this time of year that we could get back to our listeners the power of possibilities 
I yeah. think a lot of people are kind of waking up from the dead now. And I think a lot of us were called into a time of patience where we felt like we had to put our visions or our dreams on hold for a period of time. And then we kind of became a little bit helpless in some areas, not recognizing that those dreams are only on hold because they were, there was still divine timing that had to orchestrate everything and put all the pieces of the puzzle together where eventually that dream would come into fruition. And I feel like people are starting to see the possibility of that dream coming back to life, that opportunity that they've been thinking about years and years and years have passed. And now people are starting to see like gradual little snippets of what's possible so I think it's really the power of possibility that I'm starting to tune into for people now where it's like that thing that you've been talking about that you've been seeing in your meditations, like now's the time, you know, you've been asked to be patient, you've been asked to hold back, you've been asked to wait, and now you have the opportunity to allow that to come into fruition if you, if you receive it. Yeah, if you receive it and take the action. And yeah. some of the thing that, that the download that um, was just sort of coming as you were talking to is that for a lot of the people listening and people out there, they got to remember and you said it well timing is that a lot of things that we were ready to embrace and go through, the world wasn't ready to embrace it. So yeah the world will be ready to embrace as there's these mass awakenings, the new way of doing things. And you and I talk about this a lot that the old ways of doing things, guys, is too slow. Yeah. We've got to stop using these old ways. They don't work anymore. And I'm sure you've noticed that even in the last, in September, how many of those old methods and ways of being are just old. They just don't shift the systems and the paradigms very fast. No, you can't, you can't get ahead by working harder, you know, no. you can't. <laughs> no. you can't be happier in your relationship by escaping to some kind of addiction. No. You know, you can't pretend that you're, you're authentic when you're not, there's just yeah. certain things that are just not going to work anymore. Yeah. And this is a thing too, where a lot of people are like, why is this stuff being exposed? I'm like, well, because you can't live like that anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a and blessing. It is a blessing and, and you are correct. The sort of work, I love that you said that that work really hard, even when you guys are into any kind of, you know, redesigning and transformation of your whole physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, psychological, and psychic ways of being and living that, um, you know, these, these systems, like we said, are going to have to break no different than we we're saying with our other systems. So yeah, getting, getting, numbed out in lots of ways or just saying I'm going to put that on the shelf till later it doesn't work like somebody asked me the other day she said Tracy like I'm, I'm in this space I want this and then I said I, I know what this is the same conversation you had with me like a year ago she goes I know and I said because the relationship is over and you you've done everything you can there's no more you can do so until you take the action step spirit can't give you anymore and people need to remember that as we get to the end of the year. If you're asking for things, you better look at that atmosphere. What needs to be cleaned out or spirit can't give you anymore. Yep, definitely. They can't. I vibrate even with the opposite of that, which is doing too, like almost like doing too much at once. Like I know with me personally, it was like wanting to see results right away after taking action. <laughs> yeah. those, those results don't happen necessarily right away, but you still can take the action over a long period of time and sustain that. And I think that sometimes it's, um, you know, it's important for yeah. people to understand that, you know, sometimes you have to take consistent action, especially in the 3D physical body. I know you talk about this a lot where it's like, it's not just about doing something one day or for a month or even two months. It's about doing it over a period of time before you start to see the results. And I, I do relate to my astrology a little bit. And I really believe that like a lot of fire signs feel this. Uh, what sign? You're a Pisces. So I'm a Pisces. Yeah, you're I'm a Pisces. More along with going with the flow. You That probably comes to you a little bit more. Easily. No, I, if you actually saw my chart, you'd be surprised. People read, have read my chart and like, oh, you're not a traditional Pisces. Like Pisces are big. Yeah, they're very dreamy and they're very, but they're like with your business and the way you co-create and the way yeah. you move. Like I am, they're like, you are not a traditional Pisces. Wow. Yeah. yeah. They say oh. I'm very rare. I'm like, okay. <laughs> what element is like in your chart? I can't remember off the top of my head because that's not my whole space. I can pull it up. I'll have to pull it up for you. You'll be surprised because a lot of people look and then, and I've had it read over time and people are like, yeah, you're, you're not normal. That's not normal. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I know I'm a double Leo. So my sun and my moon are both in Leo, which means that, and my Venus is also in Leo. So that's just like, 
basically a whole lot of fire coming at me all the time. So for me, it's like doing something major and expecting a big kaboom to oh, happen. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> No, and it doesn't, and it's becomes, when it becomes your way of life and you do it and you know, you're having fun guys, you can co-create so much and things that I know, even for me, I see them showing up now, things that I thought about, or, you know, wanted to make sure that I saw them two years ago, but only as you, as you start walking like this every day, you start to realize, oh, I had to put this in place before this could happen. I had to put this in place before this could happen. And I think that's what people miss all the time when they're co-creating. And this time of year is so big to co-create and it's so big to bring in and your asks and your blessings. Don't get caught up. If I can say it, what hasn't, what you think hasn't shown up or hasn't worked or it it is it's coming it is coming it's there but a lot of those steps they need to be filled or your found I said this on the Thursday is I like Mm -hmm. your foundation is changing you guys have had bungalows and they're all decrepit now and they're being pulled down so when the foundation's strong you can build a hundred foot you know sky like a high rise and you can have all this beautiful stuff come through absolutely gorgeous yeah yeah and it is about foundation changing and it is about all that beautiful, beautiful. And like you said, guys, you got to do this every day. This has to be the way you live. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not talking about like you have to have a routine every day, but to know that you're connecting every day and you're, you're yeah. watching. We should open people's perceptions more so they can watch and yeah. see more and feel more and stop second guessing yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the best things that I learned this week actually was um, by Vishen Lakhani or Lakhiani from the Mind Valley. Oh, and yes. Something he talked about just made me so aware. He said, there's two ways in which we learn through life. One way is through the experience and the struggle and the pain and going through the lessons that we learn to go through our upgrades. But the other way, which is called Satori, which is a lot easier, is <clears throat> by way of insight mm-hmm. and by way of Uh, going within ourselves and learning exactly why things happen the way they do. And in a lot of cases, we can get a lot of information as to what it is that we need to know so we can override that pain, so we can override the struggle. We don't have to go through it in the physical if we're connected enough in the, in the, let's just say, spiritual or even enough to our emotional awareness so we can understand that before anything were to happen, we can transform that within ourselves and within our awareness just by listening. Yeah. And it's, it's, I always say awareness is 99% of it. It's exactly what you're saying. And and it's true. So, so many people get caught up on, oh, that's karma. So you have to walk through it or that's this. So you have to walk through it. There's certain things you walk through, but as soon as you get the awareness, guys, I'm telling you, it will shift immediately and you will then make all the, that's the next part of that, right? It shifts right away, but then you've got to do those little steps. So if you get the awareness that this thing is over, I need to go over here, then you go. Sometimes you'll come back to those places later because maybe you weren't ready for them. And yeah, at the time. And when you really start to connect with the awareness, then things start to move so fast in your life. Absolutely. So fast. And I just, I want to just take a minute for people again, for expansion of awareness Mm -hmm. and to remove as we get to the end of the year, thank you God, the accumulation of all the roots and the seeds of the belief system that you have to hold on and old spiritual teachings and old religious teachings, that things have to be hard and that things can't move and that you have to have these obligations. And if you step out of line that there's punishment or there's fear, and I want to remove all of that. And now it's going into the, the throat and the heart for a lot of the people listening. Thank you guys. Let's get rid of that and expand you more into being so connected with the divine universe, God energy, that you're following your own awareness, your own perceptions and your own systems as a recalibrating, even if it doesn't look like it did before. And even if it doesn't conform to what you think your <clears throat> current atmosphere of people are following. That's wow. Key words there. Even if it doesn't look like how it did before. Yeah. Yeah. Because if it would look like it did before, we'd still be the same garbage. <laughs> like I, people say, well, I want that. I'm like, but it's not going to look the same or you're still going to be in the same poo. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Let's get rid of it. You know, it's true. <laughs> yeah. And I think the scary part is not really knowing what it's going to look like just because there's no, there, we haven't stepped into that future zone or yeah. paradigm yet. So it's like being open to that. 
and also to reset people. It's like renovating a house. You know, yeah. you pull your whole house down and you're picking out all the new things. And it, it some days it sucks. It's messy. It's gross. Yeah. You're like, I don't like that tile. I wish I'd picked that flooring. However, but when the house is done and you're like, whoa, well, this is what we're doing in our bodies. We're renovating. And sometimes you got to pull down that bathroom and it stinks and it's backed up and it's plugged and it's gross. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you got to rebuild. <laughs> yeah. And I'm really grateful for Tom for that. Cause I've, I've really felt a shift in his parasite cleanse. Yeah. Oh, Tom Palladino on our show last week, he's going to be, we'll rerun his show. He's going to be regular in the new year. Yeah. Love his work. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Love what he's doing. Yeah, and my whole love. family in on it. <laughs> yeah. You guys, I'm telling you, that's a collaboration yeah. you see more yeah. of. And I, I'm just so grateful for what he's brought because this is another form of collaboration where we're all working to lift up. Cause when you don't have parasites in your body and your levels are being regulated night and day. Yeah. And also colonics. Like I have yes. a new, I have a new appreciation and love for colonics as I'm going through that process <laughs> I'm it in my eyes and I'm feeling it in my crown chakra. And it's just amazing to recognize how our gut and our, our, uh, our crown chakra are so interconnected with each other. So. Oh, they're friends. So usually if there's something totally locked friends. here, I'm always moving at the root. So I'll tell you, oh no, if anybody's done that, I've been there, I did it when I went through the bad cells, we'll call them. So I get it. I am like another hour that zooms right by. Our right? beautiful producer Carter, who is, who he's like, Okay, we're coming to the end. Up, guys? <laughs> we have to give him a shout out because, you know, he does keep us all on track. And at Transformation Talk Radio, he takes care of everybody. So I always want to honor those people that we don't always see on here. So again, where can everyone find you, Selena? www.selenamoon.ca. That's S-E-L-E-N-A moon, M-O-O-N.ca is the best place to find me. I love it. And we're going to see some more things next year, you yes. know, as we've been talking more, some collaborating and things that are opening. And this is why we bring everyone to you guys. So you can actually start to enjoy these shifts because we can't do this journey alone at all. So I'm so grateful you joined us today. And I know we will, we will have another opportunity in 2009. 19 and may you and all your clients be so blessed and mm -hmm. just get through every bit of this transformation together and strength and support and stability to all of you and to you know you and the people you're working with and everybody listening and just know that you don't have to do anything out of obligation or expectation mm -hmm. and do what Selena had mentioned how she did a check-in and take the time to make yourself a priority this year. Nurture yourself and know as you're going through the peaks and valleys of the end of the year, just trust the old is being ripped off, as Selena said, and the new is getting ready to rebirth. And all you have to do is walk into it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Check us out next week, guys, on the Tracy L. Clark podcast and show. We are. I'm going to be here on my own next week. I'm going to be answering your questions and shifting you guys. We're going to do a whole hour of shifting together. We haven't done that in a while. And again, if you're up for our call tonight, you can check us out at tracyalcork.com, join the global online call, and you get a 90-minute uh, session of clearing and shifting, and you get the replay. So I hope you'll check that out. Join our and beautiful your YouTube community. channel is amazing. The YouTube channel's <laughs> changing, so check it out. And we'll check you guys out next week on the Tracy L. Clark Show. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.